Thank you, Mark. Uh, as you, you said, I will focus my presentation in sustainable development of Guinea-Bissau uh, by focusing in the objective 14 and the 15 of the uh, sustainable development goals of the United Nations. As you know, we have uh, 17 uh, goals defined by the United Nations for sustainable development. So I choose 14 and the 15, what we are working in Guinea-Bissau. Uh, as Mark said, objective 14 is about the land uh, on water and the below water, and the objective 15 is life on land. In resume, about biodiversity. Uh -huh. So, uh, first I want to wish to all women on International uh, Women's Day today. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah. So, I want to thank uh, General Director Mark for uh, inviting me to this conference, this forum. And uh, also I'm very impressed, sincerely, about what uh, they have been doing here in, at ICD because I have been participating in this uh, in ICD since uh, 2014, and uh, I saw a lot of things and the improvement also uh, here. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to, to give a short presentation focusing uh, two points. Uh, the first point is about is introduction, huh? one introduction. And the, and the second focusing in Guinea-Bissau uh, sustainable development goals. About some facts I want to, to, to give you, huh? we need to analyze some facts about objective 14 and the 15. So first, Guinea-Bissau is a, a small country in West Africa. Uh, with 88 islands, uh, and uh, we have a continental part, and then uh, we have also islands. Uh, so is uh, uh, it, it was colonized by Portugal uh, uh, with Angola, Sao Tome, Mozambique, uh, uh, Cap Verde. Uh, uh, in 74, uh, we got independence from Portugal. It was a very terrible war. Uh, military war. Uh, so, Guinea Bissau the territory is very small. Uh, we have very great biodiversity in the country. Forest, mangroves, uh, uh, sea waters. Uh, maybe somebody know uh, cashew nuts. Cashew nuts. As you know, Guinea-Bissau is the third producer in the world of cashew nuts. Uh, the first is Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, and the Guinea-Bissau. In terms of quality, it's the first quality in the world. Uh, so uh, according to United Nations, what is sustainable development? Sustainable development reflects the process that meet the needs of present, but conserving the future for the next generations. Uh, the characteristic of sustainable development, you can see it here. Economic development, it should be carried out in a way that is equitable. Uh, economic development is carried in a way that is viable also in terms of environmental preservation. Is what I choose here, the objective 14 and the 15, about the environment uh, protection. Social development is variable by the environment. This is, is very important, uh, what we, we are talking about sustainable development in our country. Uh, sustainable development cannot be achieved if we have conflict, we have environment degradation, uh, extreme poverty and anger. It is, we, we cannot talk about this. Uh, so uh, this is about sustainable development goal, objective 14 and 15 in Guinea-Bissau. Uh, I'm going to talk about this importance of ecosystem for the well-being of the population, local population, uh, the cause of biodiversity and eco ecosystem service degradation, 
consequences of the biodiversity degradation, impact on social well-being, and the national strategy for biological diversity and the priorities. So, uh, the principle of government for sustainable development in line with objective 1415, uh, defined by the government is this, improve the quality of population life, conserve the environment uh, vitality, minimize the depletion of non-renewable resources, for example, the forest, people are cutting forests everywhere in Africa, as you know. Uh, they are very big multinational exporting woods to, uh, to Asia, mainly. Uh. The change of attitude of practice of population investing in bas basic health and education, we need to do this. Uh. And they provide a national framework for integrating development and conservation, and they guarantee the ecosystem integrity and the biological diversity. At the end, I will show you the small film about the areas and the parks, what we are doing in those parks uh, for the conservation. Yeah. So the, the, the biodiversity in Guinea-Bissau, yeah, you have mainly the coastal part, you have the forest, and you have, uh, and all this, you have a very big park of what we call mangrove. Do you know what is mangrove? Yeah. So mangrove is very important for the climate change. Uh, you know, Guinea-Bissau is very, is low uh, in the water. Yeah. Practically, it is the same. But what, what helps us uh, to avoid the mountain of the water to the, to the lands is mangrove, because it stops the, the water from coming. Uh, so we have one of the biggest uh, park of mangrove in the world. Uh, and the mangrove also is very important for fish, shrimps, all biological, uh, uh, that's living in the water. They, they go there to, to eat the flower of the mangrove, and they reproduce there, the fishes, and after they go to the ocean. Uh, so it's very important for the life of those animals. Uh, biodiversity and ecosystem, the key sector production for the country. Uh, uh, more than 80% of population is living uh, from the agriculture and the, from the, uh, the sea of Guinea-Bissau. Uh, so it has a very important, uh, it plays a very important role for the population, for their life. What is the cause of biodiversity and the ecosystem degradation in Guinea-Bissau? Mm -hmm. The pressure has been increasing on renewable resources. As I said, cutting the trees uh, because people don't have alternative. Uh, and the, the problem of meteorological parameters such as decrease of precipitation. Before in Guinea-Bissau we have a rainy season during seventh month. Now it's six months of rainy. But the rain is not to stop. The rain is full rain. You know. And because of meteorological parameters now is decreasing. The climate change, pollution, exotic and the invading species, there are some species they are disappearing now. Uh, you you have you, you know the, the, the green parrots? Uh, green parrots, you know that uh, practically is finished in in the world. Uh, you can find few in Sierra Leone and in Guinea Bissau only. So it's very, very uh, important, the preservation of those animals. The deforestation also, uh, the pressure and the threat done by fish sector. We have very big uh, exclusive economic zone. And so we cannot patrol everything. So there are a lot of illegal fishing from everywhere in the world there. If you go in the sea during the night, you, you, you will think maybe you are in New York. <laughs> light everywhere. <laughs> huh? You see ships smuggling and they, uh, doing illegal fish, illegal fishing. And the, the problem of uh, socio-cultural environment also, weakness of the policy and the judicial action, and the weakness of the administration and the institutional response. What is the consequences is what I talk, the problem of uh, uh, 
the raining season, you know, the raining, we have a water to produce everything. So it's diminishing also. Uh, uh, the problem, you see, for example, here, 50,000 hectares of rice field cultivation surface complained by farmers is estimated that about 20,000 hectares have been successively abandoned or never used entirely because of this uh, environment problem. Yeah. Impact of social being. Uh, so as I said, you know, from June to October now we have a rain. Uh, but before, mm, and this has a very big consequence for the population to cultivate uh, the production, the rice, mainly the rice, uh, etc. And the, what is the legal and the institutional policy of the government to deal with all those problems? So, first, uh, we are part of international uh, community, so there are some rules and some laws, some uh, some decision taken at, at international level that we are part also of those uh, conventions. Yeah. So all those conventions we are trying to apply. Mm. Uh, those conventions, you, you, do you remember the, the, the last decision of President Trump about the, uh, the initiative of France about biodiversity? Huh? Everybody's talking now about this, huh? that the uh, United States want to to not be a part of this convention, but some states like California, etc., they are doing very well in preserving uh, so the problem of environment. So all the all the the, the international uh, convention, uh, Guinea-Bissau you know, also is applying this. Uh, so this is very important. But at national level also, we have national plan of environment management. Strategy for National Action Plan of Biodiversity Conservation, yeah. National Action Plan for Climate Change, uh, Mentor Plan of Coastal Planning, Forest Mentor Planning, uh, Fish Mentor Plan, etc., etc. So, uh, the objective of Guinea Bissau for 2025 is to be a model of sustainable development in Objective 15 and 14. Because we think that we can do more for those two objectives. Yeah. And the, uh, sorry. I want to go directly to the national priorities. Uh, we define this six priority for the government for the conservation of the biodiversity of Guinea Bissau and the ecosystem, to strengthen ongoing action of the biodiversity conservation, restore the areas. Uh, degraded, uh, and the, all those six objectives, we are working on this now. The government, all the government is coming also, they engage to continue to, continue to apply and do those objectives defined it because this is a national objective. So we have some areas uh, for this objective 14 and the 15 uh, that we are working on. We have about 15 uh, 15, uh, can I say, uh, percent of the territory considered as a protected area of Guinea-Bissau. So I will show you some parks, areas, huh, protected by our law. You have, this is a natural park of mangrove in Caseo River. Uh -huh. Considered the fifth largest park with the extend continue to ecosystem in Mangal in Africa. Mm -hmm. So this is the mangrove. Mangrove is this. <coughs> this is the Rio Cacho, uh, the nat this natural park of mangroves. Uh, you see? And you have another park is Lagoas de Cufada, Cantanese, Rio Grande de Buba. Huh? Home approximately more than 2% of the world population of Pelican white. Uh, uh, diverse wild, wildlife with more than 315 species of deer uh, and the animals, etc. Yeah. So this 
So this is the Rio Grande de Buba also is one of the park. Uh, this is Lagoa de Cofada is a natural park also. Natural park of Cantañez, uh, the zone with dense forest, subhumid uh, areas in West Africa. This one. You have also the marine natural park uh, in one of the island. The island, is, the name is Juan Vieira. You have some uh, prospect I put there you can take. Uh, so it's a global sanctuary of the nesting of the turtles green. Green turtles, do you know it? Uh, it's a small turtles, but green. You can find it only there. Uh. Yeah. It's the third place most important of the Atlantic after Costa Rica and the Ascension Islands. Uh. Uh. You have 30,000 nests per year are put on by green seed turtles. You will see it after in the small film I This is Archipelagos de Bijagos. I said we have more than 88 islands and the islet. Some islands, nobody's there. Huh? So the population is very small, so we cannot uh, live on all those islands. More of those islands, huh? in those islands, there are a lot of companies, oil companies, doing the research for oil and the gas. Huh? The multinational companies, they are there. But the condition is to preserve the, the environment. You can find oil, but is there are no appropriate to technology to extract the oil, we stop. So this is, uh, I was talking about the green parrots. Huh? It's disappearing now. You can find this small uh, quantity huh? there. This is Orango National Park also in one of the islands. can find all this there. And there's some protected area huh, for the tourism. Huh. So I want to show you this small <coughs> film. And their traditions. The Republic of Guinea Bissau is the heir to the ancient Kingdom of Cal which was a Portuguese colony for centuries, a situation that exerted a very strong influence on its cities and architecture. Its one and a half million inhabitants are made up of an amalgam of ethnic groups, customs and social structures, in which the majority are farmers with traditional religious beliefs. is slowly strengthening its position as a powerful attraction for tourists who love nature and as a safe destination. Far from the political and religious conflicts that are troubling a large part of the world. It boasts a system of protected areas that cover more than 15% of its territory. In one of them, as Floristas de Cantañas National Park, we find Imbering. 
in the midst of incredible virgin forests in an excellent state of conservation. Here we can observe primates such as chimpanzees and colobuses, which are in danger of extinction with a very limited distribution in Western Africa. Strolling on foot along the many paths that cross these forests allows us to discover the true size of these trees and to observe numerous exotic birds such as hornbills. The Bijagos Archipelago is a chain of several main islands and dozens of smaller uninhabited islands and islets formed by the deltas of the area's two large rivers, the Jeba and the Grande. Their biodiversity is spectacular. Diverse kinds of forests, palm groves, mangrove swamps, beaches, and a varied fauna of birds, mammals, and reptiles. We find sailors and warriors in the proud past of the local population, the Bijago. But those times lie far behind. Today, these peaceful and hospitable people maintain their strong cultural identity and live in complete harmony with nature. They've always known how to make the most of the natural resources without endangering the land where they have lived for so many generations. Part of the secret lies in their deep and ancestral beliefs in which animals, plants, and even inanimate objects have souls. This is in great contrast with the simplicity of their almost elemental lives, organized in small villages or tabancas, that preserve a significant cultural heritage in which their way of life and customs have survived through the ages. This world is changing in the grip of civilization and progress. resource for countless generations of Bijagos, and it still is. And not just for them, many terradriform birds comb these fertile beaches in search of their daily meals at low tide. Park, we find the Orango Parque Hotel, a construction built in the purest African style. Perfectly integrated into its surroundings, it is immersed in nature at its most flawless and also lives in perfect harmony with the local community. This haven of peace offers a wide variety of activities for travelers who prefer to enjoy everything that this very privileged setting provides us. This national park offers a broad range of things for nature lovers to do. swamps create a labyrinth of narrow alleys that hide something new and different at every turn. The inland routes traverse savannas under the ever-watchful gaze of local guides.
Lake Ankanakuri is a paradise for wildlife. It boasts small structures designed to enable visitors to enjoy the very bird life living on it without disturbing it. Birds such as these small black herons, which spread their wings like a canopy to attract small fish to the shade they make and so be able to catch them more easily. Another trail leads us to Lake Kanikusa. small observation posts, it's very easy to spot its most important inhabitants, the hippopotamuses, giant vegetarians that weigh more than a ton. intimidates them. They're the true stars of this show in a place that also attracts numerous birds. <laughs> the landscapes of João Vieira Boilau National Marine Park are a delight for the eyes. Exotic golden beaches protected by mangrove swamps and palm trees with mysterious tracks drawn in the sand. This opportunity to rest or to enjoy nature surprises us on a calm afternoon with nothing more alarming than the murmur of the sea. But when the sun drops beyond the horizon, another jealously guarded treasure is revealed. Poilau is a sacred island for the Bijago. That's why its beaches are still a sanctuary for thousands of green sea turtles to lay their eggs. This cycle has repeated itself again and again since the beginnings of time and continues to demonstrate the power of life. Ecotourism in Guinea-Bissau has been organized such that the profits generated by tourism remain here, a responsible and solidary form of tourism. And it ensures this by preserving this extraordinary natural setting and by helping to improve the quality of life of the local population, which has always managed to make the most of nature in a respectful way. This is a long-term investment so that the people who enjoy this natural and cultural heritage can continue to live in harmony with it as they have since time immemorial. So, thank you. Uh, I think you, uh, you see a little bit how uh, we preserve the environment and the, uh, with the objective of 40 and 15 of the sustainable development goals. And the, when uh, we have about 15% of our territory uh, is for the preservation and the parks, etc. And it works also with the local communities because we think that is very important for them to conserve this. And uh, if you see there, you cannot see any modern construction in those areas. No. Uh, because we understand that it is very, very important for local community to preserve this. Because it's for they and for the future generation. Uh, so thank you again for watching this and the, for hearing. <laughs> so any questions? Yes. 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 Yeah, we'll, come, we'll be in there. Okay. Yeah, this okay. side first. Yeah. Hey, how are you guys Good to see you again. Um, I have a question about the um, political stability in Guinea Bissau right now. I've heard from the video that it's um, relatively stable in comparison to the companies, uh, the countries around it. But has the stability continued over the
the last four to five years, have there been no major hiccups since uh, 2015? Yes. Yeah, thank you. The, as the, we are, were talking yesterday with the Minister of Gambia, uh, the, the big problem of uh, in this in this moment is the politics po politics party, uh, politic stability, politic stability. We have is is a very small country. We have more than fifteen political party <laughs> fighting at the level of the parliament. Uh, uh, those fighting is always at the level of parliament. So this has his implication also for the for the country. But I think is is a processes mm, because the democracy is very young. Uh, so we need to improve. And the, what is the biggest problem is that the role of uh, in the constitution, the role of the prime minister and the role of president. Yeah. Uh, when we are writing our constitution, we copy from Portugal. And uh, what's happening in Portugal, you have president, with, he's there only to cut, to inaugurate <laughs> some, some uh, uh, events. And you have the prime minister who has a very big power. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the person who appointed the ministers. He, he's executive at the same time. Mm. So we think that uh, if you don't have a very good understanding of government and the uh, president, you have a problem. So it's why we think, and also we are working with ECOWAS, mm. uh, how we can modify this constitution to be more adapted to our environment. Because this kind of situation you need a, a, a very high level of culture, culture huh? in order to work together without no problem. Because it's very difficult. Con no countries in Africa have this kind of con constitution. We have it Guinea Bissau, Cap Verde, and the Sao Tome. But everywhere there is a problem. So we need to work on this. And the, the members of the parliament agreed with this. But uh, uh, how to do it by referendum, by majority in the parliament, and there there is a very big discussion about this. Yeah. Thank you. More question? Yes. Yeah, uh, to be effective in those politics, we need to work with the local communities because they are living there every day. Uh, for example, in the areas we want to protect, uh, we are protect. So uh, we have what we call a commission, uh, a commission at the uh, uh, national level, regional level, and the local level. So they work together uh, in order to preserve uh, the, the environment. Yes. Hello, Mr. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, my name is Daniel from Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, I have two questions. One is from Polo Mangu. For the Mangu uh, itself, uh, it's the same like uh, the country, you have 80, uh, 80 uh, islands, right? Yeah. 88. 88. Yes, yeah. Uh, mangrove, you know, is prohibited to export mangrove. Even the mangrove high, very high, uh, uh, is, is like uh, gasoil. Uh, if you put fire on it, 
Yeah, it burned very, very, very quick. So we have been, uh, we, we have some problem with neighbor countries, uh, because you can find, for example, some campaments uh, from uh, people from Sierra Leone, from Ghana, from somewhere in West Africa, coming to for the mangrove uh, for cooking. Uh, but uh, uh, we have uh, the measure also to protect this. So it's prohibited to export. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot uh, cut directly on the export. It's very complicated. Yeah. Yeah. About tourism, yes. We have uh, uh, the tourism is, is still small, uh, small uh, because of the infrastructure. We don't want to build, uh, can I say, the infrastructure that can hurt the, 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 the environment. So we need to combine all this and to see how we can do it. As I said, there is a lot of companies there working on the uh, oil and the gas uh, companies. But uh, it's at the level of a study only. Uh, so, but the main focus that everything will be done there, but uh, have in account the problem of environment. If not, it's, it's not possible. So we have some small uh, airplanes that go into the island uh, to bring tourists, etc. But in a small, yeah, we don't want to build very big infrastructure in those islands. Yeah. Yes. Yes, uh, women are very active in the economy in, in Guinea-Bissau. Uh, and also in the government you can find, it's not like Rwanda who have 50-50 in the parliament or in the government, but uh, we are trying to do uh, our best in order in uh, political field and also in the economical field to have more presence of women. So, ah, yeah, do you, uh, we still, you know, we, we are the only country in West Africa that belong to one community, uh, that is UEMOA. Do you hear about UEMOA? UEMOA is a West African Economy and the Monetary Union. Mm -hmm. We copy from Europe. Uh, we have uh, the same currency, we have the same central bank, and we have uh, uh, the free movement of, uh, uh, of people. Uh, we are eight countries, and all eight countries, uh, seven countries speak French. Only Guinea-Bissau speak Portuguese. So, uh, in terms of uh, human development, uh, yeah, we are trying to do our best because all those countries, uh, uh, we are making some reform in higher education, for example, adopting the same rule adopted by European Union, what we call the Initiative of Bologna. Mm? Do we hear about this? Bologna Initiative, mm? about... Uh, license, master, and uh, uh, doc the doctorate. So uh, it's a big reform. So Guinea-Bissau is doing uh, a lot of uh, to improve his capacity in terms of education, in terms of health, uh, to be like uh, Cote d'Ivoire, <coughs> Senegal, because they are the, the most advanced in our West African country. Cote d'Ivoire has a, a long tradition, and the Senegal also, in the human development. Uh, so we are doing our best in this, in this case. Mostly the reform of uh, higher education. Uh, we are doing this, and also in the, uh, alf what we call alphabetization of the, the, the population. Thank you. Uh, more questions? Yes. Uh, Joseph from Health in the United States. Uh, my question is on your 2025 mm -hmm. goal. Yes. Um, Or how would it even bring that date closer to present time? 
Yeah, we fixed the objective, and the, we have been working more than 15 years already in the preservation of, uh, of uh, environment mm -hmm. in line with those two objectives, 14 and the 15. So we think that if we continue to progress in this way, we can achieve in 2025. So in these two objectives uh, as a model, Guinea-Bissau, uh, and the, everybody are conscious about this, and the, everybody are working on this right now. So we think that is very important, uh, not only uh, to achieve this goal, but also for us uh, internally, because if it, those objectives didn't be defined by the United Nations, we need to do it by yourself. So uh, it's very important to keep going in this way uh, because we fix some objective. Those objectives must to be uh, must to be achieved, and we have a lot of commission working on this at the level of community, uh, regional government, and the central government. So, yeah. Thank you. More questions? So thank you for uh, for this.